Okay, so this short video, I'm going to show you um, inside of my virtual world how to create a 3D object that you can then use in QGIS. <coughs> I'm using this app called Gravity Sketch, um, which is like a virtual reality drawing program. Um, and you start off, you just have a big empty room like this. And, um, and then uh, you've got a menu here. And on this menu, I can go and uh, start a new sketch. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a simple sketch. I'm just going to find the z-axis here. Um, I'm just going to make a simple little object that I can use as a 3D object in QGIS. So I'm going to pull up my palette over here and then look at the available... Um, sorry, not that one, that one there. Look at the available options. I'm going to pa paint with a primitive object. And I'm just going to use this one uh, subdivision object. Um, and I can close the menu again. And now I can simply like draw out a shape here, and then uh, place it in the on the origin of the scene. Okay. There are tools for doing snapping and sort of organizing that everything is properly aligned to the axes. Um, I can't remember how to use them right now, so I'm just going to do things in a kind of a rough way, and then. Um, just show you the workflow, but but uh, not try to get too bogged down in all the details of that. Now this this square, I want to change the color of it, so I'm just going to grab it and pull up my palette. Um, if I move my hand forward and backwards, it changes the the brightness, the color, and then if I move around in a circle, you can see the square is changing color. Um, so let's make it kind of a bright luminous green like that. Um, I can also change the material type over here. So for example, if I wanted to make it more reflective or something like that, it gives us quite a nice looking um, luminescent cube. Um, and then I can, um, for example, copy this, right? Let's just um, remember the key, key, key bindings for doing that, like that. It's not the key bindings, but the controller action for doing that. I sort of, uh, uh, I think I grab it with the left hand trigger and then I grab it with the right hand. No, it's the other way around. I can undo something that I didn't want to do. Um, I grab it with the right hand and then, yeah, and then I use my index finger. You can see it's pressed in red there. And uh, sorry, my ring finger to press down the ring finger button. And then I use my index finger to just basically pull off another copy. So now I've got three copies of this thing. Um, I can sort of move them in, around in the space to see how it looks from a distance. Um, and uh, you can see they're a bit lopsided, but I'll fix the lopsided after I change the color. You can see it's also the material is quite reflective. You can see the, the walls reflected in the, um, in the background. So I'm just gonna go in here and just change the color of each one. Oopsie. Um, <laughs> let me just fix that again. I'll just put it over here while I change the color. I like to kind of stick my hand up over the top of it. Um, so yeah, let's give it a, like a purplish color like this. And maybe we'll change also the, um, um, the material type just to show some different materials. So that's more of like a cartoon texture, not so reflective. You can see by comparison, the one at the bottom, I can see the walls and roof reflected in the background. This one hasn't got any reflections. Um, and I'm just going to paint my third block a different color. So I just grab it, choose the color pick here, and let's go for something like that. And then also then give it more of a clay texture. Um, like that, yeah. Okay. So I've created my object. <laughs> now I'm just going to sort of fix up the alignment of things a little bit as best as I can. Like I said, there are tools to help you manage doing the alignment properly so that things are sort of snapped together and and so on. I just can't remember how to use them at the moment, so I'm not going to try and pull them up right now. Um, let's just do like this. Take that away. Take that away. Check that one is... First, let's get the bottom one lined up properly. So... All right, that doesn't look too bad. It's not exactly in the center of the of the z-axis, so we could just try swivel it a bit like that. 
that's not too bad. I'm going to just go for a rough and ready thing. I might actually just try something a bit kind of arty and uh, maybe it saves me some hassles of trying to get things to line up too much. So we'll go like that and then we'll stick that into the side like that. All right, so that's going to be our marker that we're going to use in QGIS. Um, there are a whole bunch of different tools in here. So um, you can draw with cones and um, even just sort of squiggly lines and things. Maybe I'll just add one of these strokes on the top for good measure just to show you. Let's go choose a nice color for it. Um, do this dark blue like this. And I'm just going to maybe just draw a little bit of a spiral like this. All right, that gives you a sense of what you can do. Maybe we'll just take that down a notch and sort of make it originate out of there. All right, so I've made my masterpiece. I'm quite pleased with it, and I'm going to go now and save this. So I go open my menu here, and I can press on uh, save. Let me call it um, QGIS underscore marker. And save that, and then you can also export that directly to um, an OBJ file. Yeah, so an OBJ file will, is something that QGIS can read. So I'm just going to go here and save that, and give it the same name. All right. So what's happened now is that that file has been exported to my workspace, um, and I can go switch off here. I'm going to sw switch over to um, to my web browser, I'm going to go pull that file down. We can open it in Blender and have a look at it, and we can open it in QGIS and have a look at it. All right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.